Hello, everyone. Let's see, who do we have? Let's see, Arnie. Hello, Arnie. She says, hi, Emily. Philip says, early high for me too, because early bed, crap last night, storms kept me awake. Have a great stream. Sounds good, Philip. Have a great night. Hi, Rhea, Tyler, Pam. Hello, hello, hello. Patty, hello. Sherry, long time no see. I saw Sherry this morning in Johanna's stream. And Aspie, hello. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for canceling stream on Friday. There are some days that I wake up and my tonsils are just like, my throat actually hurts. And so it's like the idea of talking um, a lot. I'm just like, this, I. This, this cannot work. So, um, but if you missed it, uh, in lieu of the live stream, I did color these flowers and I recorded it and I put the uh, video up on YouTube. So that is up there if you wanna catch up with that. Um, I'm gonna turn my fan up, one second. One second, that low would work, but it does not. Much like in many other parts of the world, it is starting to heat up, so low fan probably isn't going to cut it anymore. <laughs> there we go. Hi, Rosa. Hi, Miranda. Get them out. Get what out, Sherry? Did I miss it? Hi. Oh, I, I already. Oh, Rosa. Okay, there you go. I was just like, hi, Rosa. And I realized, oh, I already said hi. Um, so I also got some fun, happy mail uh, in the mail today from a friend. I mean, she, maybe she pops up in chat, I'll uh, say who it is. But I got gifted these. The uh, stab, I, can, I like, I trip over how to pronounce it. Stabilo, stab, stab, I don't know. How would you pronounce this? Stab, stabilo, stabilo. I always wanted to say stablio, but that's not right. Stablio sounds like it rolls up. Oh, tonsils. Yes, yeah, Sherry. Uh, I called and um, I'm waiting to call back from the um, scheduler. I'm going to get them out middle of June. We found a date for it. Uh, so yeah, I am. I'm getting them out. They are, they are coming out because I have had just about enough. So I've been trying to schedule it around the pandemic. And, you know, they're saying there's going to be a resurgence and, and everything. So I'm like trying to trying to figure out the best time to try and squeeze in a surgery where, you know, my uh, immune system will be lower just because of everything going on. Estab estabilo. Estab estabilo. Yeah. Stabilo. Stabilo. <laughs> I can't say it. This shouldn't be this hard. There's an estabilo. Estabilo. Stabilo? Stabilo. Okay, I'm going to go with Stabilo. Unless <laughs> so I'm going to sound like an idiot. We'll see. Okay, so Stabilo. All right, but these are the Carbothello. I'm just going to call them the pastel pencils. <laughs> um, so there are 60 in this set, and I tested them out a little bit today. I'll show you what I did. Okay, cool. Stabilo. Okay. Um, I felt like this morning Johanna was pronouncing Arteza and I spelled it out, but it, it didn't translate well. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> the chat's flying. Stabilo. Okay. I shouldn't say it with it, but it's Stabilo. Okay. Stabilo. I can say this. I can say this. It's like trying to say the word ochre. I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. Like it should be okra, but okra is the vegetable and it's not okra. It's ochre. There's just a few words that like you have a really hard time. Oh, Angela, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. B, B, Stabilo. Yeah, Stabilo, right? <laughs> I'm probably making this a lot harder than it is. I'm overthinking. Um, okay, so we're going to call them pastel pencils because I'm just going to sound like an idiot every time I try to pronounce it. I'm just Stabilo. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My brain hurts. It's been a long weekend. I mean, you can see how busy it was when I said I was going to color this part of it off stream, and I never did. It was just a crazy busy weekend. You just have one of those weekends where it just flies by, and you're just like, well, crap, where did that weekend go? It was just, there was a lot that went on. Stabilo. Stabilo. Oh, Stabilo. Okay. See, he's, that's what husbands are for, to help you. <laughs> Stabilo. Okay. Stabilo. Okay, I'm gonna 
I'm just gonna just well I'm already hiding my face no one can see my face so stay low there we go hi Allie <laughs> that brings in all the lurkers to be like hey by the way oh my lord Stavilo. gotta love the husbands right okay um so yes there you go all right Emma is happy Emma is okay with this Stavilo. okay Stavilo. say that 20 times fast um okay well moving on uh i swatched it today too i want to upload this chart to the facebook group so you can print this out to be i don't know why i was struggling with that yeah it's just it's been a long day it's been a really long day okay so anyway this is the chart here with all 60. so i tested it out actually in one of uh johanna's books yeah well you know what i'm thinking hi kelly um i'm thinking actually that these might be good now i need to practice a little bit but i'm thinking these might actually be good for the background of the i don't know why i keep wanting to call it a dragonfly it's not a dragonfly it's a yellow jacket i like default to dragonfly i'm telling you my brain has was not for the last three day hours has not <laughs> she got a chat yeah has not been uh connected very well um, but anyway, so I did test them out a little bit today on, yay, <laughs> one of those days, chat, one of these days. I, I was, I was making it too difficult. I was trying too hard. That's what it was. Anyway, so I tested them out here and it's really nice. I would definitely, I think, need to get a little bit of fixative for it. It's really easy to like muddy the colors really fast. Um, but I kind of want to finish this page at some point with them. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit. We can kind of see. There we go. So I was able to get a few different colors on here and here. Pastel and pastel pencils make great fun. Oh, yeah, it's, it's my favorite because it's also quicker, too. So I was able to get this also. I've got a little bit of the stem down here. I think any smaller than these, like, I don't know how well it would work for these flowers here because they're just so tiny. Um, but... Oh, the pencils change. That's right. <gasps> Sherry, you have an orange pencil now, too. We have different colored pencils in chat now. Do the pastel pencils smudge and move easy? Um, sort of, and yes. Yeah, fixative definitely on here. So when I was using them, when I laid them down, um, it's got these little, it's got a little blending stump, plus I have these little paper stumps too. So this is what I was using to blend them. And yes, they did shift well. Once I got a lot of, like I used, I have this brush. Once I got like the excess stuff brushed away, unless you really take your finger and just, it doesn't smudge too bad. But when you're in the middle of coloring them, um, they will, uh, they will smudge for sure. Like I had to, this got blended quite a bit and it lost a lot of its contrast. And so I definitely had to go over it again and then blend a little bit easier, but you can see right here, this little part here, this did get a little bit smudged over the edge. Um, it comes with a kneaded eraser, but like when I was doing my color chart, yeah, the fixative definitely is at the very end. Um, I had put the wrong color in one of the wrong slots, and I was able to use just one of the Stadler plastic erasers to pick up almost all of it. So if you make a mistake, you can either use this, or if it's too dark or something, you can use a kneaded eraser to dab it up. So I, I'm going to work on this page on my own just because, you know, I don't want to do this on stream while we still have another page going on. Um, and I'll let you know as they go along, but... They're intriguing. I enjoyed them. It definitely took me a little bit to figure it out. You can see here, even on the color chart, it's a little streaky just because you're putting pressure behind the pencil. So it's not like you've got, you know, like a powder or a plate of pastel and then you're rubbing something soft. Because you're using pencil, there is a little bit of pressure. So it definitely took a little bit of practice to figure out how much pressure to use. Like if you're wanting it to blend nice and smooth, you're barely putting this to paper at all. Like it's super light. It's super, super light. Now, like leaving it on the paper for a little bit before you do it didn't seem to affect its blendability. Like it's not like it, it can't really soak into the paper. One of the things I want to try with them though, I'm really curious if you look on the lid, 
Let's see. Oh, are they expensive? Um, well, I mean, the full set, it's up there a little bit, but you can get us, I think the smallest set is like, um, yeah, they are a little scratchy. If you especially can't handle the sound too. Um, I think the smallest set is like 20 if you wanted to try it, but here's something I'm really interested in. So it says, uh, a core, I can't even, you know, basically, yeah, add water to it. It says contours remain visible. So I, I, words are, are struggle for me today. I know I'm sure I could pronounce that, but I'm just, I'm having a hard time today. But the point is I'm wondering what would happen if I added a little bit of water to it. Hi, Robin. Yeah, not quite here. Let me, um, let's grab, why don't I just grab this page here before we, you know, start with the, with the yellow jacket, we can play with these a little bit. Okay, let's open these up and let's grab a page here and you can kind of see what I mean. Mm, where'd it go? Okay, here we are. Oh, that's when it's hard to, okay, you know what? I am going to, one second, I need to grab my ruler. Anybody who can't stand books being cut, uh, hide your eyes, shield your eyes now. Okay. Let's zoom out a tad here. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to take this page out because it is too hard to try and have this in the camera beam in it. on the glue a little bit on that one. I don't want to re-up it. There we go. There we go. Nice and easy. Okay. All right. And then this way I can zoom up real close and you can kind of see how much they move around. So let's do, let's see. Why don't we do this right here? And I'm gonna get nice and close because I want you to be able to see how much they move around. The reason I was intrigued by these, um, CB Colors, Connie, she was using them and I was in there. Um, and so I was definitely curious and uh, that's when I was gifted these. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's do, um, I wanna use multiple colors here so we can see kinda how they work together. Oh, awesome, Sherry. Yeah, World of Flowers is beautiful, I love it. Okay, so we're gonna grab one thing, okay, this is something silly, but one thing I do like about these, now it's not perfect, but the number of their pencils, the order they go in the, bo in the box, you know, usually, pencil numbers are fairly arbitrary it seems like I, I wish I knew where they got their numbers I mean these ones are kind of in order but for the most part loads of these numbers like this is polychromos they're all over the place we got you know 109 over here 110 over here 109 is an orange 110 is a blue like I wish I understood why they numbered things the way they number them but one of the weird OCD things I like is that the order of these pencils are in ascending order. So you have 105, or, you know, 100, 105, 110. And it goes all the way up and their numbers make somewhat of a sense. I do wonder though, like, you know, you have, you have 640, 642, 645. What happened to 641, 643, and 644? Like, why can't they just number them one through 60? <laughs> I haven't tried the Derwent pastel ones, uh, Sherry. Hi, Jane. So I can't uh, speak truly to that. Honestly, these are my first pastel pencils. I've used pastels before, like I have the sticks and I have uh, the pebbles chalks, which are definitely very hard because they're more, well, chalky than they are pastels. So this is actually my first for the pastel pencils and it's it's a trip. It's, it's interesting to be sure. Okay, so we're gonna grab, we're gonna grab, I wanna do a couple different colors here. Let's grab number 400. Okay, so this is a blue, and we're gonna grab, let's see, we're gonna grab 440. Let's see, which a nice light blue. Hi, 
Hi, Jackie. What if they want to add colors in between? Now they have available numbers to do that. I suppose so, but the way they arbitrarily not name numbers, they could be like, oh, here's number 900, and it goes next to number 32. It's like, what? Exactly, right? Why do you think, Jane? Because seriously, I'm, I've always been so confused. It just bothers me. I just want to have the numbers in order because then you don't have to look at the chart. You can just look at the pencils and be like, oh, okay, here goes pencil number one, then pencil number two, three, four, rather than, okay, pencil 365, one goes to next to pencil number two. I think they did, but sets have changed over the years. So like say 77 isn't actually as light fast as they thought, so they removed it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, maybe like the very first original sets were actually like 1 through 100. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, people are going to come in here and be like, I thought this was Faber-Castell. It's like, no, detour. We're taking a detour. We do that here. All right, we're going to grab um, 545. There we go. 545, that's a green. And then we're going to grab 560. And just for the heck of it, just in case, let's grab 150. See how many we can fit in there. Yeah, room for room for more colors, exactly. Okay, so here's what we're gonna try and do. We're gonna do this flower. We might not use all five because this is a lot of colors. And I don't want it to muddy, but we're gonna try. You could do your own numbers. Yeah, I'm just gonna. It's actually not a bad idea, and I probably would if I didn't uh, re if I didn't stream just because I have to read numbers and everybody else has to recognize it. If I do my own numbers, everyone's gonna get confused. <laughs> Okay, so, and I'm not going to sharpen these either because I'm really not putting down a ton of color. Now, it comes with, the this set that I have, it comes with a sharpener. It comes with a, well, it says kneaded rubber, but it seems a little bit stiffer. So, like, I have just, you know, kind of the standard, I want to say this is a Prismacolor kneaded eraser. So this is what I have. This comes with a white one, and then I also have my Stedler Mars that um, I'll keep on hand for that. Um, and then, it, like I said, it came with this stump. I also have these paper stumps here. I find that these ones, like I use, when I get too much pigment on the end of this, I just use my X-Acto knife and just kind of shave off the end, just sort of carve it. If these are good too, I might just get them instead of continuing to buy more Derwent's. I like them so far, but I don't have any other um, pastel pencils to compare them to. But at least hopefully you'll be able to see. Yes, I figured they would. I mean, just because they're pastel, they're going to be pretty soft as it is. I actually went ahead, um, just because I'm afraid I'm going to dump them out of the trays on accident, I went ahead and got myself a just a small case, you know, like 10 bucks or whatever, um, that will hold all of these so that I can make sure they're nice and secure on the elastic. Okay, so here is what we're gonna do. Let's make sure, I wanna make sure we're super in focus here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna start with uh, 400. And for anybody coming in, we are gonna work on the yellow jacket. We're just testing out um, some of these new pastel pencils here. Okay, so this is number 400. This is that dark blue, okay? So I'm just very lightly like I'm barely putting any pressure I'm only putting on enough pressure to just get a little bit of pigment I'm barely putting any oh thanks Diane <laughs> and welcome okay and now we're gonna do this light blue number 440 and this is a little dark we're gonna turn this up sorry about that Sometimes I don't notice, especially when I get real close. Okay. I don't want to put too much pressure because then that's when you get those kind of scritch scratch lines. So I'm trying to be real light here. Okay. Oh, awesome, Diane. I'm so glad you like it. It's really my favorite sticker out of all of them. It really is. Okay. And this is 545. So this would also be a good time to practice. I don't know if you can see up in the, mm, let's see, up in the little cam right here. If you can see, this is also a good time to practice holding your pencil back further rather than up close. If you're holding it up really close, then there's, here, we can switch to, uh, there we go. If you're holding it up really close like this, you're going to get more pressure 
and more chance for kind of those scritch scratch lines. But if you hold it back further like so, then you're not putting nearly as much pressure and you can almost kind of color on the side. So if you find that you're kind of choking up on your pencil and you're like, gosh, I can't color lightly enough to get this away, then go ahead and hold it back a little bit further and practice on an extra sheet of paper if you need to, but hold it back a little bit further um, and you it's, it'll be easier for you to get lighter pressure. There you go. Ah, thanks, Diane. Okay. So, I mean, and I didn't sharpen these before. I'm just literally trying to get the pigment on here, and I am not pressing very hard at all. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do that kind of almost light green, chartreuse, yellowish. It's number 560. That's the other thing is these do not have color names. They just have color numbers. So, um, yeah, if you are looking for comparisons. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Jane. All right, a little bit there. Okay. And then we're going to use 105. I think of it kind of like an ivory almost. Okay. And this is just the first layer we're putting down, but now we're going to go ahead and actually I haven't cleaned my little stump since, uh, since I last did it. So what I do for this, let's just move this out of the way real quick so you can see kind of how I trim this. Okay. And there's two sides. So if you're working on one or the other and you don't want to trim it yet, you know, you can always flip it around, but I was doing the black part of my color swatch. So I've got it here. So when I trim this off, make sure you have a cutting surface underneath here so you're not damaging whatever table you're on. And then I just take it and you could use a sandpaper um, if you wanted to, but I find I have a bit more control with this. I can get it a bit more precise and honestly, I don't have any sandpaper right now to do this. Um, and so I feel like this works a little bit better for me. But if you have sandpaper and you're used to sandpaper, feel free to do it that way. Hi, Biddy, welcome. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and sweep that away here because I do not want those paper bits under my drawing here. All right, so let's bring this back now. Now we've got a clean nub to blend with. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind because your blue pigment is going to um, it's going to move and it's going to move up as you go along just because uh, it's going to be on your stump. So be conscious of how much of this darker pigment you're bringing up into your lighter pigment. Okay. So this is just, we haven't mixed anything. We haven't blended anything. We've just put down the pastels. So now you'll see it's going to lighten up a little bit, but I'm not pressing too hard with it. And this is just the blender stump. I'm just moving in tiny little circles. Now I'm getting up into the lighter colors. So maybe if you wanted to, if you didn't want to drag too much of that blue up, you can flip it over. See, we've got the blue on that side now. And we start blending here. Now it's lightened a little bit. Now maybe I can come, uh, come on the side here, but we've sort of blended it all in together. We're getting a little bit of that green now. Okay, and then what I go ahead and do Right? Yes. Cut away, please. Nobody, nobody cut. Don't cut towards you. Don't cut towards you. <laughs> and yeah. And having a, like a nice sharp blade, um, you can order replacement blades on Amazon. And so I have a little plastic container in my desk drawer here where if I feel like it's starting to get dull or sometimes depending on what craft I'm working on, like I'll accidentally break off the tip. Um, so I have replacement ones. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back in and I'm going to add another layer. And maybe this time I might add a little, yes, Q-tips will also work. Yes, that is true. Um, I only did this one because it came, it came with it. But yeah, Q-tips may just not be quite as precise because with these you can kind of carve them to a point. Same thing with these. These are just like cheaper paper stumps that I got at Hobby Lobby. I don't remember how much they were, but hi, Arianne. Okay, so now we're going to take that dark blue again and we're maybe going to add a little bit more definition for where we want some of our darker colors. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher, but again, I'm not pushing that hard. I'm just laying down pigment where I want it. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this lighter blue 
And I mean, these are pastels, so unless you press really hard and like don't blend it much, your colors will be lighter. I mean, it's pastel, so you're gonna get pastel colors. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can get some really vibrant stuff, but depending on how much you blend it out, it is gonna lighten. Hi, Nick and Tina. That's right, they do have pointed Q-tips. That's right, Sherry, I forgot about that. Yes, pointed Q-tips would work also. Okay, now we've got this kind of seafoam green here. Kind of curving it up just a bit. I tell you, this would be some ASMR noise here, the scratchiness on it. I wonder if I can pick it up at all. Here, let's move the mic in. Okay, I'll move it in here right by the drawing. Let's see if we can pick up some of this scratchiness, shall we? Here. I don't want to move it out of camera. There we go. All right. There we go. All right, you have to tell me if you can hear it. <laughs> Okay, then let's grab our ivory. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Could you hear the scratchiness at all? I'm sure it probably picked it up a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our stump again. And now you can always like go on the other side where maybe there's less stuff. I'm just gonna blow it just slightly, okay? just slightly because I would like to leave it kind of semi-dark. I'm just going to kind of blend those edges together. See, and we can easily get some of that blue all the way up here just by dragging that in there. Okay. You can also try blending from the top down if you want to bring in some of these lighter colors rather than dragging the blue all the way across. Like I said, it's easy for it to get muddied pretty quick, but if we zoom out, let's darken it just a little bit. There we go. If you zoom out, oh God, I'm glad you guys can hear it. <laughs> if you zoom out, you can see kind of the effect that we're getting. Now let's try adding a bit of a contrasting shadow color to see if that'll work. Um, let's grab, I wanna grab kind of a reddish, maybe a reddish brown, probably this number 645 here. See if we can, here we go. And I haven't really sharpened any of these since I got them. You don't really need to that much. Okay. All right, so I want a little bit of this, uh, of this reddish brown here. You can see it's just from shipping. It's a little, a little chunk, but it kind of works out well because I'm getting more of a pinpoint. So now I'm gonna take this Consider this like layer number three. But again, I am not putting much pressure. I am going so, so light. And again, if you want to, feel free to practice on another sheet of paper. I mean, I am, I'm new to these as well, so. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this pinpointed uh, little paper stump here. It's not as bad as the squeak of markers that goes right through me. <laughs> Hi, Isalina. That's hilarious. Okay, so now we're gonna take this pointed paper stump and we are just going to lightly blend that. Okay. And we get ourselves a little bit of a contrasting shadow, okay? So let's go ahead and zoom on out now. Darken that up so you can see it. And there we go, we have a petal. Now, of course, you can play with this loads more, you can layer more, but just the key is extremely light pressure, extremely light. As soon as you start going heavy, let me grab a piece of paper here to show you. I was practicing it earlier. Hang tight, hang on. Let's see, is this it? Yes, okay. This is what I was practicing on earlier because I was trying to, trying to get used to them. Kenny, Kenny, guess what we're playing with? Kenny, can you guess what we're playing with? I was super excited. Wait for it. Wait for it. Kenny, look. Look, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, can I tell them? Can I tell them? Okay, so let's zoom in.
yeah it'll increase the grooves and if you add too many colors it could get really muddy really fast so be very methodical in your choice of you know how you layer how you layer things so yes I did okay so Kenny was the one who gifted me because she's amazing uh, Kenny did you get your package today okay so here is what I'm gonna show you all right so um, we are gonna go actually we'll just do it with the with the blue here all right so this is me sketching lightly hi Patty all right versus this and that was me holding it back you can see up there I was holding it back like this and we are just going we are going lightly okay now this is me kind of choking up on the pencil <laughs> oh don't worry uh Nick and Tina uh Nightbot is literally just that just a bot it's like an auto bot that does reminders for me all right so choke up on the pencil here a little bit and then put a little bit more pressure you can see how much more pigment that you're going to get here okay now I wasn't pressing too hard, but I was pressing more that you get uh, enough. So now you can see we're gonna blend with the stump here, and you can see it's pretty smooth. It's pretty smooth because we were nice, we were nice and light. You still see a few of the strokes. So when you're doing larger areas, keep that in mind. Oh, awesome, Kenny! I was watching the tracking because I knew it was a little bit late. Awesome, awesome. Random question. I was hoping someone could help me with. I know a lot of people use Procreate for digital coloring where they can yes Miranda and welcome I use procreate all the time I do I create a lot of my drawings I have an Android tablet and was wondering if there's anything like procreate for Android ooh that Miranda I don't know there has to be I mean not that I know of because most of the time unless you have a stylus um, it's there's not a whole lot of Android tablets that have a pencil um, yeah, I'm not sure on that one, but I'm sure you could probably do a little bit of like Googling and such, but I do use Procreate on the iPad. Okay, so now we're gonna uh, blend a little bit with this one where we, ah, where we pressed a little bit harder. I can't talk. Okay. Okay, so you see we're getting a few, like a bit more of the marks here and it's a little bit harder to blend it out. You are getting more pigment. Now, next to that, I'll show you, this is if you were to color really hard okay so this is me pressing pretty hard this is gonna be a lot harder to blend out the strokes by pressing hard okay pretty pressing pretty hard with the stump but as you can see it's clear where the darker area was where you pressed it now one of the things you could do if you really wanted to so maybe get an extra sheet of paper here okay we're gonna color a nice little section okay then take your blending stump, kind of move it around on it, and then take the stump and add the pastel like so. It'd be great if you wanted to have a little bit more control and you only wanted a little bit of a color because now you're getting this nice light color without the strokes. You know, just don't blow away any of your pastel dust and you can continue to add with that. And as you can see, this is about the same level of lightness as this so there's you know a few different uh, a few different techniques that you can use it you know see we're adding more and now we're getting kind of that medium level of darkness so things to uh, yes Robin that's the other thing I saw on the box that it does water let me grab a water brush right now and actually we'll try that let's try adding water I know right everybody's curious she does Procreate, not sure what she uses since I don't, yeah, yeah, Lisa Brando does uh, Procreate as well. Okay, uh, let's see, do I have water in one of my water brushes? I probably shouldn't keep water in it because it's not good to leave stagnant water in brushes, but I'm terrible with remembering to empty them out, especially if it's something I've used on stream. <laughs> okay, let's see, uh, you might have to try the Clip It Studio Paint app if it's available on Android. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we have all three of these different kind of ones. We have, you know, light, medium, heavy, and then if we just did that, let's go ahead and add water. Now this, what we're using is a 80 pound cardstock. Um, you could type exclamation point paper for this. We could even try this on watercolor paper too. I've got a little booklet. Okay, so I've got a little water in the tip here. Let's see what happens when we add water to the light one. Let's see. 
it moves it around a little bit. Yeah, see, you can trail it out just a little bit. Let me darken this a little bit so you can see better. There we go. So it does trail it out just a little bit. Let's try this one. So obviously the more pigment you get, you have on your paper, the more blue that you could have. Okay, let's do this one. Definitely a lot more pigment there. And then this one. So one of the things you could do is you could use this almost as a palette, depending on the kind of paper you're using, if you wanted to get something really light. So yeah, it definitely does activate a bit with water. Let me grab my watercolor book here. This has got quite a bit of a different texture on it. And this is uh, an Arteza watercolor book. Actually, I did a review for these recently. Um, you can find those and I've got a, uh, at least for another weekish, I think, I've got um, a coupon code that you can use for these. So let's brighten this just a little bit. Okay, let's see. Yeah, see, this is the book I used when I did the review video. Different ways you can use the um, real brush pens. Okay, let's grab a page here. Not smooth, I want rough, okay. All right, pop this little elastic band on here. Okay, let's grab this here. All right, so let's test this out just a little bit. We'll just keep using blue because we've been using blue. All right, let's get that in focus. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna do a couple of different things here. So let's, you can see that there's much more texture in the paper. In fact, now I can, now that I got something to focus on, there we go, okay. So we got the texture on there. All right, and then let's do one where it's really hard. I'm not blowing away any of the dust because if we're gonna add water, we might wanna use that. Okay, now I'm, see I'm holding further back on the pencil. So I go nice and light here. Okay, so let's try a couple things. Get the water going on here. All right, so and this, like I said, this is on watercolor paper. Get a little bit more water, there we go. A little bit of water coming out of there. All right, so even on watercolor paper, it won't pick it up off the texture, but it still does reapply on the paper. And look at that, you can even get a pretty nice gradient as it flows out. I don't wanna do it any darker than that. Okay, now let's go ahead. <laughs> look at that little droplet of water, it just it's just sitting there. I don't know why, but this tiny little drop of water makes me extremely happy. Is that weird? Is that weird for droplets of water to make you happy? It's just so perfect. It's just happy little drop of water. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. It's a drop of water. And you're not late. You arrive precisely when you mean to. Oh, I'm so glad, Angela. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead. That's so funny because like it wouldn't flow onto the pastel. So because, I mean, it's not a watercolor pastel. So you can see that it's a little, I don't know if you can see that, it's a little gritty in there. So it's not dissolving like the way uh, watercolor would. So I suppose it worked a little bit better when you didn't use quite as much pastel. So if you're using it more as a palette than anything else. So even if we move down to this light one on watercolor paper, it's not going to get rid of a lot of that, but so I would say if you're going to use it as a palette, I would lay down a medium amount of the pastel and use it as a palette from there. Aside from that, using water over the top doesn't do a whole lot to get rid of the texture. I mean, it did a little bit when we did it on um, the paper here, like for this softer part. And as you can see, once it dries, you're gonna get those hard lines, kind of like when you use um, ink tents. But I think for trying, I, I'll, I'll probably end up using these dry more than I would uh, more than I would wet. But you can see it is possible to take pigment from this and water activate it. I think this one probably turned out the nicest here. Your mind is blown. <laughs> and welcome to everybody coming in. I know the title said Faber Castell. We're going to get that, but I had some happy mail today, and so we were testing some things out. So yes, it is water activated. And for those of you that um, are, oh, let's get this water off here. I don't wanna get this page wet. Okay, 
So this was the leaf we just did with, oh, let's get that in focus. There we go. This was the leaf we just did with the pastels. This was stuff I did earlier. So I definitely want to continue with this. Oh, Isalina, it's what we're using now. She got me the uh, pastel pencils. They're so beautiful. So we've been we've been spending a little time uh, playing with these playing with these tonight. We're definitely going to use them more in the stream in future. I was saying before that I think they would be perfect for the background for the um, yellow jacket because I've been trying to think about what I'm going to do for the back of it. But I think we could get some real nice colors back here. Ah, the water seals it so you don't need a fixative. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's an idea. Hey, let's try add it. Okay, so this is a Johanna Basford page. I mean, and this is just something that I'm playing with. So it's nothing, nothing too big. Um, but let's try that with this. Okay, let's make sure we've got all the blue off this brush. Okay, so this is um, from World of Flowers. So this is, you know, the thickness of the Johanna Basford page. That I don't know, Pam. I haven't ever, um, no worries, Selena. Um, I haven't ever tried Gamsol. I don't use a whole lot of blending solutions. Um, generally, if I'm blending anything, like I'm using this stump for the pastels, but that's because you, that's kind of how it works with pastels. Um, generally, if I do any blending, I use one of two items. I use either a Caronda uh blender stick, essentially, um, or a white Prismacolor usually what I use and not a whole lot more but let's go ahead and try and add just the lightest amount of water because I don't necessarily want to blend this anymore but as a fixative I could see how this could work really well okay hang on I want to make sure there we go okay so let's use just a tiniest bit of water here yeah because I didn't even think about it using it as a fixative Trying to be aware of if I've got a lot of, you know, pigment on my brush. I don't want to, you know, muddy it up too much. But I am just putting the lightest amount of water over the top. I can see a slight buckling in the paper, but not much. Water brushes are real nice, especially if you can get good control over them. All right. Now, if you tilt it up, I don't know if you can see. There's a tiny bit of water on it. Let's flip it to the other side. And it should be right, right here is where I place the water. You can see it looks just fine over the other side. Now, if you're using a ton of water, your paper um, has been, uh, since 8.30 is Lena, so like 40, there you go, 42 minutes. Um, yeah, as long as you use a light amount of water, then that can help seal it in. Okay, now, now that it's there a little bit, let's see, can I get in any closer? I wanna show you just one thing that the water was doing, maybe something to keep in mind. I don't know if you can see it. It's pretty small, but this could be something you may want to wait for the water to completely dry and it may affect how you do pastel a little bit more. Now, I don't know if you can see. This is about as close as I can get with keeping it in focus. But if you look really closely, right along this edge, the water bled just the tiniest bit. So keep that in mind. So this may affect when you lay down the pastel here. This could change the texture of the paper and it may lay down a little bit differently. So I think that if you're gonna use water on the top of the pastel, maybe save that as your last step and really just use a very, very light amount, like practically just a damp brush, not anything where the water's going to pool. So this, let's see, is that? It's pretty dry. I can feel it's a little bit cool still, so it's probably not completely dry. I know it's really hard to see, but in person I can see it. It's just the smallest amount that has gone over that line. But if you're getting precise, then it may be something you want to watch out for. And also, I have a feeling that after having water on it, it's going to be hard to blend over the top of this again. So I think that if you're going to add water in it to seal it, I would definitely wait and have that be your very last step, just like with any fixative. I mean, you can use any kind of spray fixative. I've got like a UV one that I use for my paintings. Um, an aerosol hairspray could work. Uh, not a spritz one. You're just going to end up with drops of hairspray all over the place. But a nice aerosol hairspray um, can also work. And then, you know, there's, there's a range of different fixatives and stuff. But if you're using water, definitely save it until the end because it could affect other parts of the picture as well. Okay, 
Well, that was fun. We are definitely going to be using these more, uh, more a little bit later. So let's go ahead and shift gears here a little bit. I'm going to move these over here. Okay, move this stuff out of the way. Okay, pop that there. This there. Thank you, Kenny. I like it. <laughs> Kenny happened to be in um, CB stream when she was using them and I was just blown away. Uh, what's her, what's, what's her full YouTube name? Cause if you haven't checked her out, it's CB's coloring. See, I just usually look at CB. I'm like, Oh, it's Connie. Um, CB's coloring. What's it called? CB's coloring and crafts. If you haven't checked her out, you should. The stream that I'm talking about, it was, um, she streamed it four days ago, coloring in the garden of earthly delights. Um, so that is when she used that. So if you want to check it out, um, yeah, she did the background for that. There we go. But yeah, she did a really good job. Oh, definitely Jackie. A coupon code for the pastels? No, I only get coupon codes through, uh, Arteza. Um, cause I do reviews of their videos and then they only last usually about a month from when I, um, review it. So my current coupon code, I think ends on the 26th, so the 27th, but next time I review something, um, I'll have a, I'll have a new one, which I'm hoping to, once they get out, um, I've actually got diamond painting out and I've never done diamond painting, but I may give that a shot. They also have some new pastel sticks coming out and I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to check out, but I can't remember it. Um, but yeah, it should be good. Okay. Uh, all right. So here's the deal. These little, uh, hexagons. Now let me clarify. This is not honeycomb. Uh, a lot of times yellow jacket necks will still have this pattern in it. However, that doesn't mean you can't color it uh, yeah, like a yellowish color. I probably will because truth be told, uh, like the little yellow jacket nests, they're usually kind of like a gray. You could do gray if you want, but I don't know. Maybe we'll do a blend of like kind of gray and gold. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to color a few of these. I know, right, Sherry? I'm right there with you. We're going to color a few of these because otherwise it would take forever. So what we might do is color three or four of these, and then maybe we'll start on the background because really, here, let's zoom out, take a look at this as a whole here. Okay, get that in focus. I do a manual focus on it, so sometimes that's why it takes a little bit. Um, so we'll do, see, I've never tried it. I thought it'd be a little fiddly, but I absolutely love Arteza's stuff. Like all, all of the, I, I rarely find an Arteza product I dislike. Um, so I feel like if they're going to put out a diamond painting, it's probably going to be pretty good. Yeah, for sure, Isalina. Um, so anyway, we actually might be almost done with this one. So I'll color some of these and then that'll show you how to color the rest of the hexagons and then we'll do a background. And then after that, you should have all the instructions to finish it. So I'll probably finish most of it off stream. Like I said, we did our first, uh, part was the bottom part, the middle, and the legs, I believe. And then part two was these wings and the head and the antennae. Uh, the fine liners in the ink conics are, are too different, uh, Sherry. I haven't actually tried the fine liners, so I can't uh, speak to that. But I did find that the ink conics were a little juicy. Um, and then the, uh, flowers, there's a recorded video for it. it's not live. So it's not going to be in the live sections, but if you go to my main YouTube, there's a section that says uploads and this should be here. I really need to, I did playlists for a little while, but I'm behind on that. So I should put these all together in a playlist. Um, so there's three parts so far. So today will be part four. We're going to do these and then we'll work, I think a little bit on the background and then you should have the rest of the tools to finish the page. It's looking really pretty. So I definitely do want to, um, want to finish it. So I've been trying to think about how I want to color these. Let's see, would it be more comfortable if I did it down here? It might be more comfortable if I do it down here as far as how it is. If I do it here, it's going to be off, off the table during stream. So 
let's work yeah let's work down here okay there we go let's see we don't have Arteza here but I have at least 10 of the diamond dots brand oh okay okay yeah so like I said I feel like it would just make me go cross-eyed a little bit um but if it's an Arteza brand oh gosh get get in focus I'd be uh willing to give it a shot we'll do a uh We'll do a diamond painting stream. I know this is a coloring thing, but you know, it might be something somebody wants to watch. We'll see. I've never done it before. So it, it, uh, it might be fun. It's nice to try new things on occasion. All right, let's take a look at what we have for our colors here. And I probably want to go ahead and do like a yellowish kind of honeycomb thing just because, um, I don't know, I think it'll be pretty rather than like a gray. We may end up doing like more of a gray here so that this all pops because if we do all this yellow and then do this yellow and this is yellow, it's all just going to get kind of lost. But because this wing here is gray and gray, so it'll be like gray on top of yellow. I don't have to worry about it um, blending in too much. So I think that's what we'll do. We're going to do yellowish kind of brown here with a grayish um Something that'll make it so the wings aren't too muddy, but it'll be a little bit darker back here. If you get a light pad, you're okay. Oh, if it would be Arteza, we could. I have my pencils. I'm terrified. I do have a light pad. I have a small one. Um, I'll use it for tracing. If you want a good diamond painting, get a diamond art club. They're the best and ship fast. Oh, good to know. Hi, Yvonne. Well, I know that there's Arteza UK. Pam, I'm trying to remember. Are you Australia? Because I know, I don't know if the UK ships found older Artezas that I'm using until they run out. I'm not using the new ones. <laughs> okay, so we could use some of the same colors that we used for the body. I think I've still got those little papers over here. Let's take a look. I have since updated the videos with the color names, but I do have these little papers that we used um, last time we colored them. So... We used India Red, Sanguine, Terracotta, and Cream for that part. On the yellowish part, we used Terracotta, yellow, uh, Light Yellow Ochre, uh, Naples Yellow, and Cream. And then, let's see, Red Violet, I think. But honestly, I think if we're going to do that, we'll probably use a blue. Oh, there's like a blue violet. Yeah, those might be our, our colors. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Diamond painting always intimidated me a little bit. I feel like I'm one of those people that I'm just going to like move to grab something and I'm just going to dump the whole thing all over the ground. <laughs> that would be just my luck. I hear though that like if you really enjoy it, like it's really relaxing because it's just like, you know, do, 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 you know, putting them in. It would probably make it really easy to chat and stuff. Okay, let's see. I'm going to grab a little bit, a little bit of chapstick here. Amazon Australia. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, let's see. Let's zoom on in. Take a look at these little these little guys. Okay, there we go. All right. So let's dig out these colors here. We have. Maybe we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see those. Terracotta, light yellow ochre, Naples yellow. I'm not sold on using this blue violet. I'm gonna put that over here for now. <gasps> Yay, Kenny! Oh, let me know how they fit. Um, one of them is slightly looser than the other because I wanted to give you a, just a slight variation in size. Um, but let me know how they fit. Okay. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and grab those. We have Indian India Red 192. Okay. India Red. Sanguine 188. Let's see, that's 186. Okay, Sanguine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I hear those international uh, charges can, can be a little rough sometimes. It's nice for those stickers that I send out. Uh, I can just pay for the cost because it's just in an envelope. I can just pay for the cost of the stamp. So, all right. So, 188, 192, 186. Six for terracotta and then we're gonna grab cream I swear I'm gonna use up cream so fast 
All right, and then let's grab the yellow colors too in case I want to use it. We need light yellow ochre, 183. Okay, light yellow ochre. We're gonna set that to the side over here. Okay. Let's see, and then Naples yellow, 185. And then cream again. Okay, so we have these other two, two colors here. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll just put this over for now. We're just gonna be using these colors for now. Oh, they're great. I like that's I have I have never found a, a company that has had such good customer service. Like most of the stories I've heard, if for some reason like somebody's pencil got broken or a marker arrived dried out, they just send them a whole new set to replace it. Like it's just like, oh don't you just keep the old set, we'll just send you a new one. It's like, uh what? Like Arteza yeah, it blows me away. They arrived today? Oh, awesome, Emma. That's always so nice when it comes a little bit early. All right, so we're going to start with India Red. When I drew this, I wasn't quite sure what I had in mind for colors. I really like the idea of the lines down. Um, but what we're going to start with is like a darker color here, and then we'll just kind of, we're just going to kind of wing it. Okay, so we're using India Red right now. We'll go ahead and darken this just a smidge. There we go. Oh, I'm so glad, Kenny. I'm so glad. I, it took me a little bit to get the elastic and I was making them for, for my husband and I, but oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And you know, I was digging in my material box and I found that black material and I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. <laughs> oh, awesome, Emma. Oh, I'm so glad, Kenny. It's so hard, especially because since, like, I don't know you in person, like, everybody's head is, you know, a different shape or whatever, but it's like, most of the time, most adult heads are about the same size and elastic is stretchy, so I had my fingers crossed. I'm so, so glad. But yeah, I saw it and I was like, oh my god, this is perfect. That makes me so happy. Yay! Plus, I got excited because I had a chance to, uh, I had a chance to uh, use one of my Johanna uh, gift tags. I got them in a box, and it's like it has to be a very specific gift that I put these gift tags on. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the perfect opportunity. <laughs> I have a picture of them. Oh, I'm so glad. Kenny, do you mind if I share a picture of the masks? I took a picture of them before I, uh, before I sent them. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Okay, this is totally random, but there's this dress company, just because I'm looking at the pictures. How pretty is this dress? Like, if I was going to do like red carpet stuff, this is what I would wear. It was just something I saw today and I was like, oh my God, it's so pretty. Okay, that's totally random. I'll stop gushing about the uh, dress. I mean, it doesn't matter that the dress, you know, costs fourteen hundred dollars. But I imagine that if I was a, you know, a lister celebrity, like one hundred forty dollars or hundred fourteen fourteen hundred dollars would be uh, would be nothing. <laughs> Can dream about fancy ball gowns, right? Let's see. They almost look like coasters. <laughs> Okay. All right, Kenny. Yeah, let me know. Let me know if I can show them uh, what they look like here. I'll, I'll share it. Okay, cool, cool. All right, so these are the masks that I made and sent those. So I actually have this on the front of my mask as well. So they've got, let's see if I can get that in focus. There we go. It's the black on the outside and then red on the inside. Right, Kenny? Gorgeous. Oh, but yeah, I was excited to find, find it. So this is them open up and then there's red on the inside. But yeah, they turned out pretty well. 
Yeah, this guy that I follow, I follow him on Instagram, and he just posts dresses. What is it? Tetua Matoshi is what it is. But anyway, really pretty dresses. And so I just follow the Instagram account just because I like looking, looking at the pretty dresses. <laughs> like to daydream about fancy things. You know, I have dresses, but honestly, who... Like, unless you're going out on a date, like, where can you wear a fancy dress these days? It's not like I'm going to prom. <laughs> I do remember, though, my senior prom, there was a girl that had this massively poofy, like, princess dress. And I was just like, a oh, little bit jelly. <laughs> I actually made yesterday... Um, some pillowcases so whenever my daughter sleeps she has a tendency to pull her pillowcase off her pillow in her sleep like I don't know what she's doing but she doesn't do it consciously oh it looks like a coaster it probably could Kenny <laughs> I think we'd all be admiring mask all oh, thanks <laughs> well to be fair as I have some of those too but I found a really nice kind of like curved like pattern and everything and uh so I put some of those together. I need to make myself another one because honestly, I cannot find mine right now. I put it somewhere and I don't know where it is. <laughs> so I need to uh, make myself a backup here. But uh, anyway, so I made a pillowcase, but I made it the cover and then I had it, you know how sometimes there's pillowcases that are like open in the back, but it overlaps. So I made like a set of three of those and she can't uh, take it off in her sleep anymore. <laughs> Okay, so now we're gonna use Sanguine. So I'm just using the lines as a guide for like where the darker colors should be. And you can see too, because I'm wanting to go light, I'm holding it back a little bit further. Oh, nice Sherry, nice. Well, and I like these ones. I know that the hospital ones like filter things out more, um, but I like these ones because they're completely closed on the side. So I'm switching to this so you can see. I'm holding it back fairly far because rather than choking up on the pencil, we are going to get more of a point. If you hold it back further, it's easier to get nice light strokes. I'm not going in circles. I mean, I suppose I'm kind of going in ovals, but I'm definitely doing more lines than anything else. And I have a little bit more control over the lightness of how I, uh, how I color. Okay, let's switch back here. I need to like get a stream deck so I can just hit a button. Don't use the mask that I made. He, he preferred the ER mask. The cloth that I use is a bit uncomfortable. That's fair. What kind of cloth did you use, uh, Rhea? All right, now we're going to switch to terracotta. So the way that I did them is there's three layers of cloth. So I need, because I plan to keep them, mom and I are high, are high risk. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, the, the, the mouth part that I made, it's got um, three layers of fabric and I do 100% cotton. Now there are, you know, not all, see there's this little spot here that got a tiny bit of water on it at some point. Um, you know, not all cotton is created equal. Some is, you know, thinner, some has a higher thread count. And so they say that a good way to test um, for whether or not it's going to work well is if you can hold it up to the light. And the less light you can see through it, then it's a nice, then it's a like got a good thread count thickness. The pattern that I used on one of the streams, I went over it um, on the last half hour of the stream. I forget which one it is, but it's got a picture of the masks on it. So I have the link to the pattern that I used on that. Um, but on the pattern that I use, it doesn't say to add the extra layer, but I figure an extra layer, you know, is an extra layer of protection, essentially. Um, so I put three layers of cotton in it, and then it's got like two layers on the cheek. Which three layers? Oh, see, yeah, I did three layers too. Maybe it's like the sides, because the sides of mine have two layers. All right, let's see. Now 102. So, I mean, I'm almost holding this like right at the end here. Because since it's a larger space, I don't want to press too hard. 
Okay, now I wanna pick out kind of a blue color as our contrasting shadow, and then we're gonna go over this space again with our colors. Exactly, an extra layer won't hurt. Last Wednesday stream, yeah, there we go. Thanks, Benny. All right, uh, let's take a look at our color chart here. I wanna grab a blue. If you can blow out a match to the mask, it's not thick enough. Oh, Jane, I like that, I like that. Yeah, I, I like that, I hadn't thought of that. All right, um, let's use, I don't wanna use anything too bright, but I don't wanna use anything too purpley or too dark. Mm, not 246, I'm thinking 151 will be good. 151, it's this one here. Uh, let's see, 151, which is helio blue reddish. I feel like, did I use that at one point? No, Helio Turquoise is what I used, which, oh no, I haven't actually used this one yet. It's not, uh, it's not sharpened. So let's grab, let's give this a quick sharpen real quick. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Okay. All right, so let's see, we are using Leo blue reddish and it's number 151 there we go all right Put that there for just a bit okay now I'm gonna choke up on the pencil just a little bit because I want to have a little bit more it was easier to hold back further because we were just covering a whole space but I want to be very particular about where I put this blue so I'm pulling up on the pencil just a little bit so I can have a bit more control Okay. And because you can see the lines are a little bit heavier on the left side, that's where I want to put this blue. Now for those of you, and this is probably, you're going to get tired of hearing it, especially those that are in my, ooh, my phone is uh, not on silent. Hold tight. Sometimes I forget. Okay, there we go. Um, one of the reasons, you know, for those that have been here, you know what I'm going to say about this. Um, but the reason that I use something like a blue or a purple instead of a black is based on, I was going to reply and it was Nightbot. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I just got that as Lena. <laughs> um, is the color wheel. So if you are having a hard time choosing your contrasting colors or colors in general, get yourself a color wheel. So the reason I'm using blue is because a majority of this is kind of a reddish orange. Complementary color of orange or even red orange is blue green and blue. So that tells me that's what I wanna use as my contrasting shadow color, which is why if I color with a lot of yellow, I'm probably gonna use violet as my shadow color. If I'm coloring with red or green, I'm gonna be, so use, the complementary color is the color that is opposite of the color on the color wheel. So no worries, this Lena, is my fault. I should have turned my phone on silent. Um, so if you don't have a color wheel and you're struggling with what to use for shadows or whatever, um, go ahead and take a look at this. You could type exclamation point color wheel. It's just like five bucks, but I recommend a color wheel to everyone. It really helps with uh, decisions. Um, I'm sure you said this already, but what sharpeners do you use? All I have are Prismacolor pencils right now. Um, Angela, if you are using Prismacolor pencils, I would get something like this. And I would use the larger hole. When you sharpen your Prismacolors, let me grab it. I'll show you two things real quick. When you sharpen your Prismacolors, you don't want that much lead exposed. Um, the thing about Prismacolors, and actually I was telling Johanna this this morning because she tried out the um, Curran d'Ache on stream. Okay, so Prismacolors and Curran d'Ache are both a very soft leaded pencil. Um, things like, so they're a wax-based pencil, polychromos are an oil-based pencil, therefore they are a harder lead. Now Arteza is also a wax-based pencil, but they are also a harder lead. So if you have something that has a soft lead, like a Curran d'Ache Luminance or a Prismacolor, when you sharpen your pencil, you wanna have the least amount of lead exposed. So. For instance, all right, this is a Prismacolor here too. You can sharpen it in the smaller one, which is what it fits in, okay? And you're gonna have, let's see, this is getting dull, so it's kind of shredding it a little bit. Let's go ahead and zoom on in so you can see. 
you can see there's a fair amount of lead exposed. I mean, you can even see it's just notorious Prismacolor where the wood is kind of chopping away. This is also too, if you find this is happening more, odds are your blade is dull, which I'm sure mine is. Or you can sharpen the Prismacolor in the larger hole. I know it's a little blurry, sorry in the larger hole. Now, because it doesn't fit it snugly, there is more of a chance that it might wiggle. So you want to be careful with your breakage. If actually, if that even feels loose. But you see how less of the lead is exposed. This is shorter versus this is a little bit longer. And this is because if it's shorter, then the lead itself is going to have more support by the barrel than if it's longer. So while you're coloring, you're less likely for this barrel to break. And one of the reasons that that happens a lot with Prismacolor is, first of all, the quality of Prismacolor is not what it used to be. Thank you, Kenny. It's not what it used to be. And so the way that these are made, the wood itself is softer. And when they put these together, if you look at the bottom, you can see where the seam is on the bottom of these. But when they put these together um, in the factory, these are dotted. My prism, my prism used, used to get destroyed. I had to get a different one. I always get breakage, yes. So if you have a dull sharpener, you are also going to get breakage. Like this is, here, this is the stab, stable, stable, this is the sharpener that came with the um, pastels. So you can see it's like breaking a little bit. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit of an example. So if you have a pencil that can get you like a nice long strip, this was made for the pastels, so it's a little bit different. Um, if you have a nice long strip, then you know you've got a nice um, sharp blade. Um, but anyway, when the Prismacolors are made in the factory, the barrels are just dotted with glue, which makes it so that the lead isn't as secure. So like I've had leads that even slide directly out of it. So anyway, the point is because they are more fragile leads, you want to have less exposed here so it can have more support by the barrel as you're pressing on it. It's going to be the same thing here. And one of the ways that um, Karandash solved the problem with having um, a softer lead is they created a thicker lead, which obviously came in a thicker barrel. So you're going to need to use the two holes. I mean, you can see just how much thicker they are. Um, plus, Karandash has uh, glue all the way down the barrel. Um, so for Prismacolors, I would recommend something with a double barrel that is a little bit, um, can create, uh, you know, a bit of a shorter, a shorter tip rather than something like this. This is what I use to sharpen everything else. This is a, I don't know if you can see here, let's switch here. This is a doll, whoop, there we go. A doll 133 hand crank sharpener. You can see I put my, put my stickers on it. Um, it's got adjustments for uh, length and everything here. Um, and I use this for most everything. I do have an electric pencil sharpener, um, but it's a little loud for stream and I don't use it much. Well, I don't use my Prismacolors as much, but um, yeah, so something like this would be good. This is just the uh, Stedler dual, dual one. It just has a little lid and then you empty it here. Um, so yeah, for Prismacolor, definitely something like that. I've heard good things about the Tagal. An Alvin Brass Bullet and an electric sharpener, the Exacto School Pro or whatever, the Alvin Brass Bullet have replaceable nibs now. Okay, so I have the Brass Bullet. However, I chose not to use it anymore because of what it's made out of. When you get it, if you look at the package, not saying you should chuck it out. Um, this was just my personal preference. When you look at the package, um, the ingredients that are used to make the brass bullet, the package say says that there are, basically there are things that they use to make this that are known to cause cancer. Um, so in general, I try to avoid um, products that have things like that or that kind of warning. You know, it's like that California label on it. And I know a lot of things do, but if there's something on the package that tells me, hey, this might give you cancer, I tend to steer clear of it. So I have the brass bullet. I'm not sure where it's at right now, but I just don't use it. Um, but I have heard that it sharpens really, really well, which it does the couple times that I that I did um, use it, but I chose not to, not to do that one. So many pencil brands are just as good and so much cheaper. That is true. That is true. Uh, super sharp, but tiny lead, no breakage with Tihu electrical sharpener. There you go. Can I, oh, can try. I got extra sharpeners just in case. Perfect. 
got it. Thank you. I'm hoping to get some different pencils. Ah, perfect. Well, Angela, if you're wanting to try something a little different, keep in mind, if you're only using Prismacolors right now, a lot of the other pencils are not going to blend the way Prismacolor are. So if you get something different and you're like, why can't I get these to work like the Prismacolors? There's not many pencils that are like Prismacolors. So trying something different, you'll need to learn to um, uh, learn light layers. If you're wanting a nice starter, um, starter set of pencils that aren't overly expensive, where am I? Uh, I would highly recommend, there's only 36 colors, so it's not overwhelming, but I would highly recommend the Stedler Ergosoft. I love these, cannot recommend them more. Um, if you look, we recently did a page in Lost Ocean using only Ergo, only the Stedler Ergosoft. So there's loads of color combinations you can make. Um, but if you are wanting to try something out that isn't super expensive, um, but is, is a nice quality, I would say the Stedler Ergosoft, hands down, easy, easy. And they're a great starter pencil for you to learn kind of like how to blend and stuff. So I've had my Prisma colors for a long time and even the older gen ones are prone to breaking. Yes, they, they can for sure. And, and a big part of it is the softer lead. So those are really, I buy mine at Art Shop and it doesn't have packaging, it's just the sharpener. Yeah, uh, that's what it said on the packaging. I ordered it through Amazon. Um, I'm sure it has something to do with the brass, but I'm not sure. Let's see, I did keep them in a pencil case so they bounced around a bit. I keep them in jars now. Ah, gotcha. Let's see. Uh, those are hard to find though. I've had trouble finding them. Yeah, so the 36 count, they did just start selling it um, on, well, by just, I mean, you know, like five, six months ago, way before uh, COVID. Um, they did start selling it in the U.S., but I do know that they are hard to find. If you can't find them in the U.S., try Amazon UK because Amazon UK does ship to the U.S. Mm. Okay, they did before COVID. I haven't tried to order anything through Amazon UK since COVID, so I'm not positive on that. Um, but sometimes you can find a smaller set, like the 12 or the 24 um, from Target or Walmart. They might be a little bit more expensive. Um, I haven't seen Michaels or Hobby Lobby carry them. Amazon's been my go-to, but let's see. Let's see, Pablo's are my favorite. I haven't tried Pablo's, but I've heard, I've heard good things. Have you ever bought the insurance with pencils? Uh, I haven't, I've never, gotten insurance with pencils is that like something that Amazon tax on let's see hi blue nice to have you here okay sorry we were using I get distracted and I go off on tangents but I like it I like it it's informative and it's fun and I love talking about pencils all right so we're still using that uh helio blue reddish here I want to get a nice kind of dark color going here they're in stock on the Amazon 36 set. Oh, perfect. There you go. Yeah, and you can still create plenty of uh, combinations with, you know, the 24 and stuff. But if you're going to get them, um, the 36, 36 is really good. All right. We can always go back and add more blue, too. Michaels and Staples used to carry them and quit. Interesting. I wonder why they quit. Oh, not to Australia. Oh, yeah, I'm not quite sure for Australia. All right, now we're going to go ahead and use that India Red again. And that is, because I know they changed some of the names. I guess it used to be Indian Red, but it's India Red now. It's number 192. Let me put this back here so you can see. There we go, India Red. If it's the Amazon Assurance, give it a really good read because I don't think you'll get a replacement pencil set. Yeah, I don't worry too much about the... Amazon's really good about return policies. If you need to return something or if something happens... Um, or if you, you know, you get a bad batch in it and everything, they're generally pretty good about, you know, being accommodating. Um, you know, I'll do the chat thing or whatever else. But no, I've never bought insurance with pencils. Um, the Karanda Ash set that I have, it's the most expensive set that I have. It was a Christmas gift, so it's not something that I just went out and got. And, you know, I've replaced a few pencils uh, over the years. Just, you know, I use their, their whites are really nice. I really like the whites for, for blending and such. Um, but it was a gift. I didn't get any um, insurance with that. But I'm also pretty careful and, you know, I, there are a very select number of pencils I allow my kids to use. So I don't worry about it too much. I don't think anybody's ever going to break in and try and steal my pencils. If they do, then I just like, you know, if, you're, if you really need pencils that bad here, just take them. <laughs> uh, thanks, Larlar, and welcome.
If I have to get insurance for my pencils, I just won't get them. Yeah, I think if I were to ever do insurance, it would probably be for something like the Crown Dosh, just because they're so expensive. But yeah, insurance for pencils is never something I really considered. I definitely am very specific about when I use my Crown Dosh, though, just because they are so spendy. You know, I'm not going to use them on a background and blow through an entire pencil. You know, it has to be a very specific picture. Definitely. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention I'm using Sanguine right now. Kind of going over everything a little bit, just kind of creating that blend. This little dot is where a little drop of liquid caught on it, so ignore that. If my Lumis had been delivered broken, I would have flipped, but delivery insurance is different than me mishandling or dropping a pencil. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, if I were to get the package and, like, stuff had gotten broken, I mean, I'd be I'd be messaging, you know, Amazon right away. And generally, like I said, they're pretty good about it. And I'd be like, all right, this got destroyed. You know, this happened. Now, I can't remember if we ordered ours through Blick or not. And I did have... It's actually really funny. So a while back, I ordered some replacement Prismacolors. And by a while back, I mean a few years ago. And if I ever use Prismacolors, you'll see a few Prismacolors with a permanent marker marked uh, X, uh, like, a, like an X on the pencils, because when I got them, they were in a bundle and they just had them wrapped in bubble wrap and they were like loose in a, in a, like a shipping bag. They weren't in a box. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So I marked all the pencils because, you know, I wasn't going to send them back without testing them, you know, if they weren't broken, but I did mark them. So I knew which ones were which in case they got all broken. And then I can be like, look, you sent me these pencils, you packaged them really crappy. And now they're all broken kind of thing. They ended, a lot of them ended up being fine and you know, nothing really came from it, but I was still, I got them. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. So uh, so when I ordered my Faber-Castells, which is recent, which is why we're using these now, um, you know, they have a section, because I ordered them from, uh, from Dick Blick, and they have a section where you can put, you know, like, okay, any, uh, any special instructions, and I was just like, you know, I'm sure that they would, to, you know, package them fine, because I'm getting them as a set, I'm using India Red right now, but I did put in the special instructions, please package them really well, so the pencils are protected during shipping, and I got it, and oh my gosh, they use so much bubble wrap like there was stuff in the box and then they wrapped it in bubble wrap and then taped i mean they had that thing packaged it didn't shift a lick during shipping so i was just like okay <laughs> so it worked a nice low price dupe for the prismas or the lelix you need you need a really good sharpener they're super soft like the prismas they might break you ah okay i haven't tried those I got the new colors too. One color was missing, two of one color. Amazon refunded the full amount of the purchase. I just wanted that color sent to me, but it was a bonus. Nice. I have Arteza that lost their color on side. What do you suggest the lettuce? Okay, let me read that again. I have Arteza that lost their color on side. What do you suggest the lettuce still good? Don't want to throw them away. Do you mean that like it sharpened uneven and so the wood is up on one side? Is that what you mean? Blick just delivered my Copic towels just like or like that, but I bought enough. The plastic was tied around the except one. When I got the package, it was ripped open and was one was missing. Oh no. Yeah, if that's the case, Isalina, if it's that the wood is higher up on one side, um, then sometimes what you need to do is just take an exacto knife and kind of Oh, the name of the color. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, you could write on it with a with a pencil. I mean, if it's a, really a problem, I would contact Arteza, you know, say, hey, because I think you just got those, right? So if it's worn off, you could let them know and they'll probably like send you a replacement or something. Um, but it really comes down to it. I would say just get a, maybe get like a permanent marker and write on it, depending on how dark the pencil is. If it's really dark, then maybe get like a gel pen or something that's pretty opaque, write it on it, and then maybe put a little piece of tape over the top. But I messaged Blake and sent the replacement out today with no charge. Oh, awesome, Emma. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna get a drink of water real quick.
So we'll finish up this one and then maybe we'll see it's oh, it's 954 already. Gosh, where is the night gone? I don't know that we'll tackle the background tonight because I kind of want to practice with them a little bit more before I start adding it to it because I definitely don't want to ruin what we've done so far. Okay, uh, now sanguine. I have like small circle stickers, write the number. Oh yeah, Rhea, that would be perfect. Yeah, anything that'll pop from it. The lead would be fine, you just might not remember its specific name. Yeah. Stuff gets worn off a little bit. I mean, the more I use it, I suppose. I have some pencils that I've used a lot and it gets worn off, or if I'm putting it in a pencil extender a lot. Yeah, so as you can see, these little, these little hexagons will probably take a little while, but it'll be all right. I've used Arteza so much that some colors I remember the name. Yeah, that's the way I am with Ergosofts. I'm getting there with uh, the Faber-Castells, though. All right, so now we're using Terracotta. Or Salumis, you can barely read. Oh my gosh, right, Emma? Oh, yeah. Like, I even have a hard time a little bit with these ones because it's the metallic y stuff. Like, I wish it was just either white or black. The trauma of rubbed off names. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I'm that way. Like, half the time the numbers are rubbed off, and I'm like, oh crap, I don't know what's what. So sometimes I just guess, or like I scribble a little bit next to the chart or something. All right, now we're gonna grab our cream. Okay. I have to do that with my widow soon because the name is written in the middle of the pencil. So, oh yeah, yeah. All right, now we're gonna grab that Helio Blue Reddish. Put that right there. I feel like too using color instead of black to shade it just makes the whole thing just richer in general instead of dulling it out you know I can't read the names of my polys, even my trusty magnifying glass. Yeah, it's really, like, I can read them a little bit better in person if I look at them. I can't just glance at it. I definitely have to look. But especially if I'm trying to show the name on stream, oh my gosh, it's so hard. All right, now we're going to grab...